Hey team, Patrick here. And in today's lesson, we're gonna do a deep dive into the one-handed backhand and really get into the mechanics of the shot. I use a one-handed backhand myself, and if done correctly, like I'm going to show you, it can be one of the prettiest shots in tennis. I'm thinking of players like Federer, Gasquet, and Vavrinka. So I'm excited to get into this one, and I'm glad this shot is still around. So let's get into it. From our ready position, where our elbows are slightly out, as we've talked about before, we're gonna to want to make a unit turn as soon as we see the ball coming to our backhand side. Our non-dominant hand is gonna be on the throat of the racket, so for me, that's my left hand as a right-hander, and I'm gonna use this to change my grip. And we're gonna to want to use an eastern backhand grip where my index knuckle is straight down on top of the racket. The head of my racket wants to be vertically up in this position here, where I can use this left hand to support the weight of the racket, and my strings are facing off to the side. I also want my left elbow to be up level with my shoulder here. This is gonna allow me to close the racket face, it's gonna stop the racket from opening up, and it's gonna allow me to achieve top spin later in the stroke. So this is gonna be an important element. From this position here, I'm ready to move to the ball. And as with all my shots, I can play with a variety of different stances, but ideally I'm going to want to step in and play more in a neutral stance. Though I am gonna to have to get used to playing with varying degrees of a closed or semi-closed stance, and this is gonna uh, going come with practice. With my last step, I'm going to want to transfer my weight to my front foot, and I'm gonna do this with what we call a heel to toe step. So my weight is now on my front foot, my chin is over my shoulder, and my front shoulder is a little bit lower than my back shoulder, though this angle is going to reverse later in the swing. I'm also going to want to make sure that I have enough of a turn that actually it's not just my shoulder that is facing the net here, but actually slightly the back of my shoulder. My shoulder blade is facing slightly to the net here. This is gonna ensure I've made a, enough of a coil with my upper body. As I do this, at the same time, I'm gonna to want to drop the racket down into what we call the slot position. I can push the strings down with my left hand to close my racket down towards the, close my strings down towards the court here. And again, like I said, we're gonna want enough of a turn that my racket is actually gonna be parallel with the baseline here. Unlike something like a forehand where the racket's gonna stay more to the side of my body. It's gonna be parallel to the baseline. This is gonna allow me to uncoil with my upper body, upper body first, and it's gonna stop me just sort of pushing, avoid me pushing forwards with my arm. So from here, I'm gonna to wanna to swing up to the ball, but I'm also going to want what we call an in to out swing path. Now you might be familiar with this term if you're a, uh, if you're a golfer, we certainly don't want, want what we call a out to in, out to in swing path on something like a slice as this just isn't gonna promote the ability to hit with top spin. You'll also notice, or you may notice at this stage, that my left hand is still on the racket. I often see players make the mistake of letting go of the racket too early here, or the left arm goes back too early, but it's never then able to act as a true counterweight to counterbalance the force of the racket going forwards and the swing then overwhelms the body and we end up spinning out of the shot and over rotating. So the left hand is only going to go backwards as my racket starts to move forwards towards the contact, which is going to keep me sideways and keep my body in control of the shot. At contact, I'm gonna want a racket face that is facing my target, so it's gonna be perpendicular to the net 
in this position here. And I'm going to achieve this just because I'm swinging up to the ball with what was a closed racket face in my backswing here. From here, I can extend up from my shoulder and hit with topspin. I don't need to roll my wrist or flick my wrist over the ball, which is again something I often see and can really lead to sort of timing issues and inconsistency. I'm going to achieve this contact point position because of my preparation. I've already set it up before. From here, I can have a wide, what we call swing arc, where my arm's going to go from bent to straight. I can extend up and out towards my target. I can have what we call a long contact zone, and there's going to be no breaking down of my elbow, no collapsing of my elbow or my wrist. I'm going to finish with my belly button roughly facing the net post at the side here. I'm going to be on the tiptoe of my back foot and the head of my racket is going to finish as the highest point. It's going to finish above my head. It's going to finish above everything else. You also want to think about holding this finish position for a little bit longer, particularly if you're practicing the shot and you're not in a point situation. And I like to say to my players at the end of their swing, hold, hold the finish here. Yes, if you watch the pros in full speed, what you're seeing is a relaxing at the end of their shot and they're recovering back ready for the next ball. But in my experience with club players, if they try and build this into their shots, it can lead to problems with over rotating and never really finishing the shot in the correct way. Okay, thanks for watching the uh, video guys and what was like a, a deeper analysis than we normally get into with our, uh, with our shots. And you may need to watch this video back a couple of times to really sort of understand sort of all the, uh, all the key points or you may want to pick out some of the key elements that you know you need to work on within your own stroke. If this video has been helpful, please leave it a like, please subscribe to the channel for more sort of uh, shot analysis coming soon on different shots like the, uh, like the serve. And let me know in the, uh, let me know in the comments, uh, do you use a one-handed backhand? Have you always used a one-handed backhand or have you changed maybe from a, a two-handed backhand later in life like myself? And I'll see you on court in the next video. Cheers, guys.